Um, no. So I, 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 I'm, I'm just gonna keep it because like, with my friends, I play like a bunch of different characters. Like there's like eight to ten characters that I can be like the majority of my friends with. But like for the sake of actually improving, you know. Were you? Down. You liked playing Pit and Lucina, right? Pit, Lucina, and Ike. Pit, Lucina, Ike. I don't remember Ike, but the th the thing about Lucina is she's one of my favorite characters. But like, I'm just not naturally as good with her. Like, I'll spend more time with her than I will my Pit and Ike. But I get more wins with Pit and Ike, mm. so that's kind of annoying. But she's like my favorite to play with. Um, Ike seems to be the one that I'm the best with, apparently. Like, the ones my friends struggle with the most. So, could be I was like, I'll, stuff. I'll, I'll play one with Ike and a couple with Pit, or I don't know, but. All right. Um, I'm gonna show you some things that I'm struggling with with Ike, that pertain to Pit as well. That's fine. So. Yeah. Uh, let's let's start off with a let's start off with the best of three just to see where you're at right now. Cool. Very cool. Also, I picked up Pyramithra, and they are the. So mains I now. wanted, uh, uh, like they're your mains. Yeah, they're gonna be the mains now. Um, <laughs> uh, I have. You have... Did your microphone just all wanted... of a sudden cut off? No, no, no. I wanted to get into them, um, but all my friends started getting into them. So and you so didn't want like, to do if it? Literally every single one of my friends is going to main them now. And I'm like, I'm not going to just join the crowd. You want to just be able to kick their asses at, at this? Plus, like, in my opinion, like, I like the pyro one more or the redhead one you like pyro more yeah i like don't even use, i literally play the entire match with pyro like i don't even use her problem with pyro is she has very bad frame data but she the fact that she's so strong i gave you way too much frame. Yeah. That could have ended very poorly for me. Oh my god. Oh, what the? Killed? Okay. That's a rage for you. Oh, uh, Uppy. I'm so- I'm alive. I don't know how. <laughs> Platform saved me and then it killed me. Oh my god, I am not warmed up right now. I played a, no. I played one whole session with someone. And then yeah. uh, I was like, alright, I'm done for the day. And then you're like, hey, you want a session? I was like, yeah, cool. Uh, I'm down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I got I, I just gotta get warmed up again. Cause usually I'd be like uploading the video by now, but That's like the second I missed. I meant to grab the ledge. I'm glad you're able to pay attention to what you missed. Although I'm not really sure what you're talking about when it comes to that. And I keep missing these grabs and they're killing me. You're making it real obvious now. Oh, I did just ask. Never mind. I feel so dumb for just saying that. <laughs> Oh wow! I almost, I almost just, I almost just juked you there. I can do that. Yeah, hers is really good. It's so strong. <laughs> yeah, it is. Her side B is a joke, bro. 
like off the edge. Uh, you mean like, Hiram? Let her side B. Like if I'm trying to get back on the ledge. Oh, it like makes you it could tough. just side B and yeah. If you do it like right on the ledge, then how can I grab it? You know, if the thing. Especially are... with like I got B. Yeah. Okay, that was a good first game. See, I told you, I told you, I'm warming up. Yeah. So this next one, I'll probably get dominated, but that's okay. <laughs> that's the whole point here. Yeah. Just to kind of see where you're at. I mean, I know, like, with Ike, I'm supposed to spam his uh, the neutral, neutral air, air. but I, I, I just... My aerials need work. Well, what do you mean by your aerials need work? Like, you know that thing that you try to show me with Pit? Like, I... You mean it's the... because... I don't know, like... If I'm doing, like, the optimal way to, like jump because I drag like the Y button to the A button to do like my neutral airs. So that's I start what, with the... That's what I do too. I just drag the, okay. the button. But then s someone suggested that like I press X and A at the same time. Yeah, but here's the problem with that. You can't full hop. Uh, you can't full hop use aerials. If you can teach yourself to... Um, like what you're doing now with the... Uh, with the short hop aerials, is you just lightly press the button and then slide down to the A button, right? That's how you normally do it, right? Lightly press the... Lightly press the, the jump button the jump for, button. for yeah. the short hop. And then I slide it down to A. So I go from Y to A. But I have to, you have to go lighter. Like that. Yeah, you have to go really but the thing lighter. Is, the thing is, like in a, like the heat of a battle, it, I, it I'm I'm still at the point where like it takes concentration, you know, to to like do like short hops perfectly. For well, me. it doesn't and it doesn't need to be perfect. You you don't you no one's perfect at doing anything. Not even me. Like you, you saw how I um, when originally when we were doing our sessions, I wouldn't always hit the nair into forward air, right? There's no perfect way of doing a short hop aerial. Like, yeah, you can do the same thing every time for it, and then say you got it correctly, but let's say it was actually like the wrong way. Or let's say yeah. I just adapt, and then I just adapt to how you use that jump aerial. Let's say you always approach with jump nair in the same way. Okay, well, where's the mix up in that? Well, you, sometimes your mistakes of doing stuff can you know, let's say, help you out on, on that kind of case. Because no one, no one's perfect on using their aerials. No one's ever perfect on it. There, there could be misspacing, there could just be bad timing. I, want, I just need to know specifically, like, what to practice with it, you know? Like, I know I'm gonna have to just spend some time and just, like, in practice mode, which... You know, it's not nearly as as you know exciting as practicing against the CPU. Yeah, but there's um, also. And I think that's the, the my hold up is I like practice against the CPU all the time, but I think there's like a limit to how good you can get if you do that. If you practice against the CPU, your timing is going to be awful. Like, let's say you do get it perfectly every time now, right? Well, now what do you work on? Your timing, right? Yeah. Oh, that's another thing. So, like, what I just did, I like down grab you and even okay that time it worked but before like it's supposed to be a true combo but even at low percents sometimes it's not working because that's like my personal go-to is i like to do down grab into you can do down throw into up air that's what i try to do but sometimes or apparently the neutral air is a good one but um, for some reason, I have issues. Like, I don't like it as much as everyone says it is, I guess. This could just be due to misinformation. Oh, wow. Also, by the way, that was poor timing, and I still hit that. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that was... Um, I, don't like, I don't like Pyro's recovery. I don't like either of their recoveries. You don't? Oh, well, actually, no. is it is it, like, you using the recovery, or are you fighting the recovery? I don't like... Like, if I was using the character... Oh, yeah. I think Pyra offstage is kind of sketchy. Pyra offstage, yeah. Um, she doesn't have the best recovery to uh, make it back. Um, 
With Ike, there isn't really anything <clears throat> specific with, like, jump aerials. Like, yes, landing Nair is something you want to be going for, especially, like, throughout the entire game. But you're, you're not going to... Hold on. Oh, I, I fat-fingered the A button. Um, I was going to switch my skin. Uh, you're, oh, okay. For That's Ike, fine. you're not going to be, like, mega-focused on, let's say... Going for like the down throw into the up air, especially at high percent. Because you see, the, even even the do. first time, even the first time I did that, I just completely missed it. What I usually do when I when I whenever I play, I, I do up throw into forward air. Because, uh, do you know how to play? Uh, a little I bit, mean. but not to the extent of like being able to do everything he has. <clears throat> like, I can just use Nair, and I can, like, use all of his aerials to the point where I can follow up. But that's pretty much it. I don't know and any... so, actually, so, what I said is, like, what I said originally, so, I actually, like, press the Y button, and I take my finger off and I go to A. Yeah, that's on the GameCube, right? You just slide yeah. the, you slide the top button down over to A. Yeah, that's, that's what I do. Okay. <clears throat> you can. That's perfect. As long as you can do it off of a full hop too, just practice. Just practice the short hop with the. And then coming down. Yeah, it's just a little bit of delay. You can't just do rising version. The reason why. Yeah. The reason why the pressing both the jump and the A button is the bad, is pretty bad, is because you can't delay the attack. I'm gonna press the. I'm gonna press the jump button and try to combo Nair into you right now. I can't really do anything with that. With Pit, you can do something um, like that because his neutral air is a multi-hit, right? And it's supposed to be used rising and landing technically, but but it's mainly used for rising. You can't do that with Ike. With Ike, you're going to be focused on landing because you can't do something like this. Well, not not like that. That was just lag. But you can't do something like that off of yeah. a rising version. You can tell how slow that is. Yeah. The only thing you gotta really worry about with Ike Nair is the spacing. Cause uh Because if done correctly, like he's really hard to approach. Yeah. Because he's a sword character and all sword characters are like that. That's why I like Lucina so much. Like I like sword characters. I wanna get good with Shulk and uh Cloud. Like, those are the two that I don't know how to use. Uh because they have all these sword characters do have different playstyles from each other. Like, yeah, the whole yeah, spacing Shulk is thing. the hardest one. Like, I thought I was good with Cloud. Like, I was destroying CPUs, and then I played my friends, and I was not nearly as dominant with Cloud. Like, he's a character that I think you have to know the game pretty well to get good at. Um, I mean, you gotta be not, like not necessarily because actually I have a I have a friend who uses him. He's kind of cheap with him. But <laughs> just up B out of shield. <laughs> like not even kidding. Up B out of shield and side B. Um But that only gets you so far. Yeah. Man. I mean the the biggest thing in some terms of like my cheesy friends, I still got the uh, my best friend uses like a little Mac that I still struggle with, and then the other one that might be better than me uses a King K rule, which is like infuriating. Because I remember. I just, remember you talking about the cheesy little and Mac. I, yeah, <laughs> cheesy little Mac, and now I got a cheesy K rule because he uh, he like just spams the the, the two per, like the B the and side, side B. B and the neutral he B. He just spams the weapons, so I'm just shielding the whole time, and he just is gonna stand there and do it until I approach him, and then when I do, he just grabs me to down throw to down yeah down throw, which sticks you in the ground. Yeah, and then he and does then like he an up tilt. free hit, and it's like that's so cheese. Like, yeah, you pretty... you have to be wary about the two projectiles. You got to know what you can punish with like a burst option. And then but he's gonna go just stand there. So like, I have to approach him though, because he's just gonna stand there and spam his little. I mean, you could try that against me out. right now. Mhm. Mm and I can show See, you a I little bit of counterplay. K rule, just to show him how freaking annoying it was. You would play I like Ike, to... right? Huh? You'd play like Ike against it, right? Yeah, like I, I Ike, um, my Ike can actually beat it, but that's like the uh, not even consistently though. Not um, even consistently. Let's see, what am I? Okay, roll, yeah. But oh, my pit can't beat it. 
Do pit. Oh, my, okay. Because my I can kind of beat it, but my pit can't at all. I can Which, do that's pit. annoying. That's that's the thing. It's like I, I feel like I try to spend more time with like Pit and Lucina. Yeah. Um, but it's like there are characters that like I just naturally like min min. For some reason, like none of my friends can beat my min min, and I don't even practice with her. I mean, Min Min, Which Min Min just goes to show what a cheap character she is. Min Min's um, a character that's just kind of BS, to be honest. What? <laughs> Min Min's just a character that's just kind of BS. Oh yeah, definitely. So that's that's what you get hit by, right? You just get hit, uh -huh. and hit, and hit. Oh no! Oh no! I'm getting hit by everything here. Oh my god. Oh, I need a super armor in some of his moves. Yeah, it's because of the belly. And he's gonna stand, yep, he's gonna stand right next to the ledge. Okay. Here, watch this. The get up attack goes right through it. Oh my god, super armor. Oh my god, super armor. I missed, I actually missed my, my, my combo there. Oh no, I lost the stock. <laughs> yeah, King K rules annoying for Pit, honestly. Uh, really any kind of heavyweight. Like, Pit can win this matchup. Guaranteed. I'm, I'm sure Pit can win this matchup. Oh, uh, I was like, why can't I pick up my... Oh yeah, I'm gonna hit you with that. Oh no. Have fun. Up in the air. I'm sure Pit can win this matchup, but uh, definitely the cheese is hard to get around. Yeah. Like you see, I'm just building up damage after you do stuff. Like there, I, I, I completely messed up my my input, but. Yeah, that one was, that one was dumb. That one was just very dumb. There we go. Oh, come on, my input, my input didn't come through. I'm getting hit by everything. What? Oh, I don't know how you got out of that. I mashed. The only way. I do. Alright, uh, so let me grab you. That's that's something. Oh wow. Okay, that's something. No way. Okay, that's something uh, that he does a lot better than what I was able to do. Is he grabs me like all the time. And with K rule, as soon as you get grabbed, that's like an instant KO. I, it's not really an instant KO. <laughs> okay. Uh, the only reason the only reason is because uh, K rule. At certain percents, K roll just can't punish. Like, low percents, I mean. Like, he can't go for, like, a hard punish, like, with forward smack. You, if you're not mashing, you, you're you just not... 
you're just going to get hit, guaranteed. I, I can pretty much tell you. You're, you're going to get hit if you're not mashing. Like, there, you saw me mash, and I was, like, at 115, right? And the down smash yeah. was completely missed. Like, I mashed very hard to get out of that. And it wasn't even that it wasn't even that difficult to be honest. Like I just mashed for like a second and I got out. Um For the whole you have to be patient about the side B neutral B. The reason be, because the reason for that is just due to uh that's just how the matchup's played. You, it's very hard to try and punish the neutral B. Um, you're gonna want to get behind him if anything, and if he does like, cool. uh, if he does like drop the neutral B, like the suck part, or the like the sucking part, and yeah. Try to go for thing. a grab and like try to go for the grab. Just dash away. Like it, the moment you see the moment you see him do it, just dash away. Uh, then, because he can't go for the grab. If he tries to grab, that's a free punish right there. Like, that's just a dash away and then go in and a dash attack, right? Uh, it's just focusing on punishing what he does after. And that's and if you know he's going to grab after the, the vacuum part, that's where you dash away or you spot dodge if you know the timing well enough. Um, really, that's pretty much the counterplay to it. Just try to be patient and go around him instead of fighting him head on like you saw how much damage i took just by walking in front of you and just taking all like taking a free 40 percent before getting knocked away and then you can do it again the whole first stock was pretty much just that yeah definitely <clears throat> and then i started to come around and avoid it overall um and uh, you saw at the end after the like you got the grab it didn't really work just because i mashed fast enough like there's counterplay it's just it's a you have to be a little patient about it um i in when you were playing ike you weren't very like patient much at all like you'd go in and try to grab you'd go in and try to do all this stuff who you talking about me like just now yeah like in our set like our first of three set right Okay. Um, you would go in without really thinking or having like come some eh, some kind of plan uh, to try to counterplay it, whatever the opponent was doing. And I get it's Pyra and Mithra and new character, dumb dumb stuff, right? But um, mm -hmm. overall, uh, it's just you gotta be a little more patient on against like these characters. Yeah, definitely. And, with the whole with the whole aerial side, it, there's I think you're overthinking it a little bit because I don't think it's hard. It's just it's not it's not hard at all. It's just you you're like how do I do this optimally? How do I do this perfectly? And in reality, there's no optimal way to do it. Like there's just a way to use it, and and that's it. Honestly, that that's all it takes. It's just using it and like i get there's the spacing like the spacing is probably the hardest part about all of it but you've got uh you've got all these factors that come in uh, such as like out of shield options for the opponent or um how you're landing or you're rising with it like it seems like you were fine on the rising bit because you're like oh i slide my thumb down from the jump button to the a button uh, for my aerials and that's fine. You, you are doing that perfectly. It's there's no problem with it um, And if you think there is a problem with it, maybe maybe there's a little more on the outside Such as just miss spacing You know that kind of thing there hell there could even be like a platform in the way and uh, I bet you didn't even I bet you didn't even know with Ike you could do like up throw to forward air or something like that um, Up throw to forward air. No, I don't ever like use up throw. Yeah, up throws a up throws a combo throw. throw. Up throws a combo throw. Down throw isn't just the only combo throw. Down throw is like the kill off the top throw with yeah. the up air and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I bet you didn't know the back hit of Nair can connect into back air. I bet that's something. No. You see yeah, that? Yeah. Okay. That's miss. That's miss space timing and everything. Yeah. Okay. That's that was another question. Cause I don't know if we've gone over this specifically, but like the the, the most optimal way to do um, back airs. Um, I know there's something with the C stick, 
that I've never really used. I don't know if that's like something that you do. You're talking about like RARs, right? Use. You're talking about RARs, right? I think so. I don't know what that it's, stands it's for. A, it, it's called Reverse Aerial Rush. Um, with Pit, I do it all the time. I, I do it manually. You do? Okay. I do it manually instead of like the certain button combination that they're talking about or what you're talking about, right? <clears throat> um, a reverse area rush is just running. You do a turnaround and then you're using, you press jump and then use back air. It would look a little something like this. Hold on, I messed that one up immediately. It's been, you see how I'm doing like a turnaround into like back air and I'm keeping yeah. my momentum while using my back air. This is a reverse area rush. Um, there's ways to do it just uh, looking, just standing and there's ways to do it looking forward or running. I mean, um, just looking forward and then doing like a, a turnaround I'm back air like yeah, that. I was going to say, I would have to turn around jump. Yeah, and that's what a RAR is. It's just a turnaround jump back air. That's that's what a RAR is. And there's a certain again yeah. again there's a certain button combination to to do it. Uh, I don't know how to do it specifically because I again I do it manually. I can do it off of down throw, and you see I just did it right there and then. I just did a turnaround back air off of down throw. Of course, it's very it's very hard because it's like manually, but I, I practiced it enough to a point where I can just kind of do it, and you're able to do it off of that. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's very it's very hard. <laughs> um, but with Ike, you're not really gonna be doing that. Uh, with Pit, you'd be doing it a little more because you wanna That's get that one spacing of Pit's right. Pit's most viable kill moves. Yeah, and with Lucina, you'd also want to do it because it's. Oh, rising, yeah, it's it's really a rising good. back air that goes really good. It's really good. Like, it's crazy. Um, but with Ike... I think it's fast, too, like, for being a back air. Yeah, it's really good. Um, cool. I don't know... Okay. It, I don't think you'd be doing it with Ike, specifically, unless you got, All like, right. a super hard read. So but... No. That's really it. Into that. Um... That's what a RAR is... Uh, there's a video out there. I've seen. I, I tried. I tried doing the input version, but I just couldn't do it because um, I was too used to doing the the other way of doing RAR of how I usually do it. <clears throat> okay. Um, um, cool, cool. And then I guess one other question I had. So I'm just kind of bouncing around. Just <laughs> no going worries, over the man. Things <laughs> that I know I had it to work on. So um, we've you've explained this to me more than once. Um, but since it's been a while, I was like, uh, I'll ask it again. Uh, when it comes to like the frame data, right? Mm -hmm. On the ultimate, uh, frame data website. Yeah. Um, I explained all three boxes the last time. What's you remember, that? you remember yeah, 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 what yeah. all three boxes that, that's mean? I, 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 that's kind of, I just want to go over that real quick. Okay. Uh, I know the green one. Uh, so like Ike's jab, it says it has a four frame startup. That means that. It's gonna contact you on frame four. Yep. The okay. hitbox comes out frame four. And then act so the blue active on four to five means it's gonna be con it's gonna hit you on two frames, four and five. Uh, it's going to be active for two frames, so it will. So like even if you if I missed on frame four, if you were still running towards me, if I it would yeah still if you missed fifth if, frame, that's what that means. Correct? That's what that means. Yes, it would linger okay. there for one more so frame. So the red one is the one I struggled with. Uh, it says that jab one is minus 15 on shield. So that could either mean two things, right? It could either mean uh, from when I let go of shield to go to jab, it's going to take 15 frames for that to happen. No. Or it's the opposite, which meanings from jab to shield is 15 frames. Correct? It's jab <laughs> to shield. It's jab to okay, shield. Okay, yep. So jab to shield is 15 frames. Okay, yeah. I, can feel, I can feel the lag too. Yeah, so, That that's pretty much what it is so that's what the 15 frames means yep so what's you're, vul you're vulnerable that? for that many frames for 15 frames yes okay now I, that would be like that's ridiculous right there yeah look at take a look at the take a look at the frame data for it take a look for the frame data um let's see for forward smash <clears throat> yeah 
It's got to be vulnerable for over 60 frames. I know that much. Well, maybe not. Maybe it not. says minus 39 and then a slash and then minus 36. Uh, that's because that one's spaced. Um, minus 36 Which... means it's spaced and minus 39 means it's like right up on top of me. So if you were to forward smash me right here, it would be minus 39. If I were like right here, it would be minus 36. Why does your location have anything to do with like my shield? Uh, because it depends. It depends on how I can punish you. Um, if I were to drop shield and use like side B right after you did it, um, it would take a certain amount of frames to do that. To drop shield, it takes 11 frames, and for the startup of side B, uh, armor starts on frame 11. So I think that's when I start going, and the hitbox comes out frame two. So let's say 10, 10, 15 frames after. I use well, basically if you used forward smash on my shield and I drop shield to use side B, I think you would have enough time to punish me, or to hold shield and punish. Like if I hold on, let me let me shield the next time. All right. Okay, maybe not. I think you were holding shield that that time, right? You were holding shield after. I was not holding shield. Do you uh, want me to hold? Yeah, shield? Yeah, I want you to hold shield. Okay. <laughs> I tried holding shield. Okay, so pit side B comes out fast enough to a point where you're you're not able to shield. Which um, surprises me because pit side B does not strike me as a fast move at all. I mean, you, it comes out, Considering... well, the hitbox of it comes out frame two, I think, where the activation hitbox comes out frame, uh, what was it? Frame nine, frame 10, I think. Okay. So it depends, it depends. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's really good. It's a really good move. Um, let's see. To use to use it, basically, you need to know what the green box means, which you do now know. Um, yeah. For a minus, so anything un anything under minus thirty six or minus thirty nine can punish Ike forward smash. So of course the Which spacing is a matters. Lot of, moves. of course the spacing of course the spacing matters because uh well um what was I talking about? Spacing, right? Um Yeah, you said the spacing matters on uh like whether or not you can punish this forward smash. Cause, like uh, with your side B. Yeah, with <laughs> my side B. I mean I that was just a kind of a dumb uh, explanation. Of, mm -hmm. of like the amount of time until or the amount of frames until I can punish you for that kind of thing that's half a second before I can like punish you it seems like a second but I'm pretty sure it's like half a second um, so anyone be anyone under <laughs> anything under minus 36 or 39 is able to punish it pit up smash comes out frame six or seven so that's why I was like, of course, the spacing matters because the up smash, uh, the hitbox comes out frame six or frame seven, and it's just above him. And that's it, pretty good for a smash attack. Yeah, it's very fast, and it's a very fast out of shield option too. Um, but if I were to use my up smash on shield while shielding your forward smash, there's too much knockback that your your forward smash does to my shield, so it might just outright miss instead of like hitting and yes it may be faster but i also need to be able to hit it you you're know? talking about if you sealed my forward smash and then go into a up, your up smash is that what you're talking about yep <clears throat> you're saying that it might miss because my smash is so long that it might not like the range no. of the attack um after your after your smash attack hit my shield i you know you see that little knockback part where I only get knocked back a little bit. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It's basically that. If I oh, can't... you don't know if the knockback difference is enough that you're going to miss. Yeah, or... I got you. Something like that. If if I were pushed back far enough to a point where I can't hit you with up smash, I would just straight... Yeah, my up smash would be faster to be able to punish you. But if I just up smash without thinking about where the hitbox is going to be placed... Yeah. I, I'm just going to straight up miss. Okay. So, um, 
if you're let's let's say the move is under minus 11 that means if you were to drop shield if like if someone were to hit you with a minus 11 move if you were to drop shield you would have no time to punish them with anything else because with if you add the shield so you're, dropping, you're saying you're saying they have they use a move that is minus 11 yeah. and after they use the move i let go of my shield that's yes. what you're saying Yep. I would not have time to do anything because 11 frames is quicker than anything I have. Is that what you're saying? No. That means their vulnerability, the 11 frames they're vulnerable for, after the Correct. 11 frames, they can shield. If you were to drop shield on 11 frames, that means anything you try to attack with isn't fast enough. Because Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, okay, you're saying that, like, after they use their attack, they're gonna be vulnerable for 11 frames. Correct? Yep. And After it touches the shield, I'm, yes. If I'm in shield, by the time I drop shield, they to are able attack, to shield. Uh, what's the frame stuff for shielding? Uh, like I said, dropping shield takes 11 frames. The startup dropping. of the startup of shield takes one frame. When you press the R button, it comes out immediately. Shield will come out immediately. But to drop shield, it takes 11 frames. Really? Yes. So when you let go of shield, you will be vulnerable for 11 frames. Yep. That seems pretty punishable just for letting go of shield. Here, the best way, here, here's, here's, uh, here's the best way to do it. I want you. I can. I can guess the best I want way you to... to hold shield, let go of shield, and, pr and then press shield again, immediately after you let go of shield. Yeah, I got you. I got you. All right, are you ready? Oh. You'll feel the eleven frames. So that's eleven frames. Yep. So you can't... Okay, that's not terrible. Yeah, it's not terrible like... at all. It's not terrible at all. But imagine a minus 11 move on your on your uh, shield. So wouldn't it be safer then, instead of like dropping shield, wouldn't it be safer to just attack out of shield? Yes, you're, you're right, actually. You're very much right. Um, but it depends. Now, this is where your out of shield options come in. You, you have, like, jump out of shield, you have up B out of shield, right? You have up smash out of shield, you have grab out of shield, and they come out much faster than dropping shield. Really? Up smash out not, of shield? Not as, not as, oh, for you, yeah. Huh? I said for you, probably not for me. Hold on. You can't okay. drop shield and do something. You just press the uh, attack button. Yeah, I got you. That's what I'm. That's what I'm doing. And you can do the same thing with up B. Yeah, because if I were to like let go of shield and then do that, it's that the it's the eleven more... frames plus the up B. Yeah, frames. so it would take more time to just do it while you're still holding shield. Yep, is what you're saying. But there's no way. What I'm saying is that like for Ike, like specifically for Ike, uh, using this, I don't know this for a fact, but it just feels like dropping shield like it, it feels like this is more than 11 frames that maybe not the up smash is more than 11 frames oh, I didn't do that. okay so for ike basically what i'm saying up whoops up smash out of shield would probably not be a viable option for pit definitely though correct yes yes of course okay. it's character dependent it's, of course it's I, character I, dependent. I, I, ike would probably want to do his uh he would want to do is jump and landing there. Don't try to rising there. Just jump, landing there. And then, okay, explain to me again, rising there. Rising there. Uh, remember when when I was doing pet? Uh, there you do a jump and rising there. You see how it comes out pretty much immediately? Because pet's nair comes out frame four. Oh, so the move is coming out before you've reached the top of your drop. Yes. So like it's a it's rising. It's rising. While you're moving. Yeah. You see? Yeah, I got you. 
So you're saying I wouldn't want to do a rising there? You there? don't want to do a rising there. The reason be Out of shield. It, yeah, especially out of shield. You see it, the hitbox. You're trying to land with the hitbox, not rise with that hitbox. With Pit, of course, it's another case. Because he has the hitboxes to rise with it. Where Ike can't really do that. Correct. Right. So for that's what I was going to say. Pit has no problem rising out of shield. Yes. Because I'm going to get caught in it. because it's, Like that. Yeah. And I can combo off of it, too. Oops, I keep trying to grab you. I'm just trying to... Come near me. <laughs> See, that doesn't even touch me. I can just stand here. I'm trying to do like a short hop version of it, though. Yeah, short hop version is a lot harder. Yeah, so that's just something I'm going to have to practice. Yeah. Because every time... That's what I'm saying. So, like, I've mastered... I I'm good with being able to do short hops, like, for the most but part. But you like also this. need to learn how to do the, the full hop version, too. Okay, so then this is another silly question. Like, is there any, like, hard rules on, like, when to use each? There's no hard rules. It's just try to use it to punish whatever the opponent's doing. If I were standing, because... if I were standing here and shielding, that Nair can use to be put pressure onto me to let go of shield and try to punish you for it, which then you can, like, back off, use forward tilt. There's a lot of ways to use the, the move creatively, and that's why it's so good. Um, if you hit with it, it can combo. If you if you miss with it and it hits shield, guess what? You can use it to pressure shield. Uh, you can back off, use forward tilt. Uh, you can jump again and use another nair. There's so much you can do with it. But the only reason why people are like, don't spam the move is because it can start to get predictable. And that's where mixing up comes in. Now, you're talking about, like that's predictable uh just rising just... there in general just using the move over and over in the same way like if you were to try and yeah. hit my shield with with rising there and then go for another nair okay yeah so to be to, to be clear though that's not a rising there that's a because rising it's coming out it's coming out at the top though yeah like but guess what it doesn't come out guess what are you landing with it this... It's not going to hit you. Yeah, it's not going to hit me, but that's because that's a rising nair. Okay, so this is what I got to do. Oh, wait, hold on. That's okay. what you need to do. Okay. Gotcha. That was so a falling nair. A falling nair. That's what you need to do. Okay. Gotcha. Does that make more sense? Yes, sir. See, the landing version of these moves are so much better. And now you now you know the minus on shield. Look at Nair real quick. Go and look at Nair's minus on shield real quick. All right. Um, for I, let's see. Um. Hmm. So neutral air. Yep. It's it says minus five on shield. Even my up smash can't punish you. If you were to use Nair on on my shield once and I tried to up smash you, you can shield in time. So if I were to go like that and then to... I mean, you have to land. You have to land. Okay, hold on. Hold on, my shield's too low. I got gotcha. you. So, but basically, like, while you're shielding, I'm gonna... I'm gonna fall down with it. Short hop... Wait, short hop falling Nair, right? Yep. Okay. I can't punish gotcha. you. Gotcha. I can't punish you. It's just not possible. None of my out of shield options can punish you. Not even my rising nair. My rise is my rising nair comes out frame seven. I know that much because of uh, it comes out frame four plus the jump squad animation. It comes out frame seven. On gotcha. rising. Interesting. So because I was always under the impression that like when somebody shields like you you have to grab them no because it's it's like an automatic punish if i were to try to attack you while you have a shield that's but why it sounds it sounds like what you're saying is that is not the case because i can i have options that allow me to to pressure the myself shield. and still protect myself before he can do anything to retaliate yep now i thought that up B moves have no lag. No. So that is not the like, case. 
what what's the thing about no lag then out of shield uh, like okay what do you mean by no lag i thought okay i'm just tripping then i thought there was what was it i i, I could have swore i was watching a youtube video or something it's like up b out of shield is like on frame zero or frame one um okay no character in this game has a frame one out of shield option. The best out of shield option in this game is actually Game and Watch Up B because it has invincibility. It has. Oh, I heard. I heard about that. It comes out frame three. That's the fastest Up B out of shield option in the game. Frame three. And it just has a big hitbox around it to a point where it's just hard to punish. You can get hit by it, and it's ridiculous. You can't do anything about it. At that point, you just have to respect the fact that their up the other shield is just too good, and you just can't hit the shield unless you space a move with a huge disjoint. Oh, man. Which is basically Shulk. Right? What about Shulk? He has such a... He has such a big up um, sword to a point where he can... Um, use a move on oh. shield and get away with it for free against Game & Watch because his hitboxes are much bigger than Game & Watch's up B out of shield. Right? Got you. So like he could basically he could do that with yep. his his sword. And he can't and up B out of shield. Would, he can't do anything. It would, and it wouldn't hit him. Yeah. Really? I didn't. So Shulk's shield is uh Shulk's sword is bigger than uh, Ike's. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Pretty much. I bet Sephiroth. See, like, Sephiroth of can... characters, huh? I would do Sephiroth. I, I said, I'm more interested in playing Sephiroth than Pyro and Mithra. Now, another thing is, I'm, like, naturally, so, like, my friends were practicing Pyro and Mithra forever, and then I, so we decided to do, like, ditto matches, and so then I did Pyro, and I, like, beat them all. And it's kind of like, Pyro with me is kind of like Mithra, uh, kind of like Min Min, where it's like, my friends don't know how to, like, defend against it it's like well that's because no. well pyromethra pyromethra uh pyra specifically she just has more which, lag to her moves which one is better um <laughs> i would say mithra is better at neutral and then pyra is just the one for killing that's that's basically it that, that's that's what the character is uh mithra just plays out neutral and pyra goes for the kills off stage and ledge traps you can't really play neutral with a Pyro unless you're playing very, very patient. And I just do. I play Pyro like I play Ike, so like I just spam my neutral airs and my forward airs, and then when I get in kill percentage, I just do up B to kill people. <laughs> no, the problem. The problem but, is Pyro doesn't have any really, really good out of shield options. Her Nair is probably the best one, and that comes out frame 11. Where with Mithra, if you're playing out neutral and using shield. I think her best out of shield option is either up B or or Nair or up smash. Uh, really, all of her all of her out of shield options are really really good, and she can pretty much punish anyone that touches her shield it, with like a really like okay move that seems yeah. like it's safe on shield, but it isn't. Um, she also has the better frame data, of course. But uh, since Pyra can kill, I mean, it doesn't make much of a difference. It's just Pyra has a hard time hitting people because of how slow her frame data is. And most of her moves are really easy to react to. Okay. That makes more sense. So let's say Whereas... let's say you were going for like a really you're a really hard read with back air. Back air comes out really, really slow. And then you end up landing on the stage and you're like, where's my back air? Right, and that's because of the really bad startup. But it's a really strong move, and that's the whole point in the character. What do you think, Pyramithra? Do you think it's like high tier or mid tier? High tier, and high bottom tier? bottom top tier is a very controversial. Uh, really, she's that good already? I really think she's that good. Do you, do you like play any characters that are like top tier uh, besides maybe? Pyro and Mithra. Lucina? Is Lucina top tier? Yeah, Lucina's okay. top tier. Lucina's top tier. 
Okay, what is Ike? Like mid tier probably? Uh, he is high tier or lower high tier uh, in high mid tier. Uh, Alright, that's cool. I'm down for that. But yeah, so yeah, Pit and Ike, I'm just gonna work on like fundamentals with them and then when I get comfortable, I'll go to Lucina. But Lucina is like my favorite character to play, but like. I mean, I get, that's a hard. I get, body, I, get, I get bodied by like my my friends like best characters with Lucina, like like the K rule. Like I don't I don't stand a chance because I can't kill. Like I can't kill K rule because he's so heavy with Lucina. Whereas yeah. Ike, I don't have that issue, and even Pit, I can I can kind of kill. Well, but with, Pit, uh, with Pit's a whole other case, but Lucina I can Lucina, understand. It, Lucina I can it, understand. It's hard to kill such a big character. Um. But she's my plus. I'm because I'm a fan of the Fire Emblem franchise too. So I love Fire Emblem. So I Fire try to, fun. Really? So like one of my favorite games of all time is Fire Emblem Awakening. That kind of got me into that, and then I played Three house, Houses. Did you ever play Fates? Uh, yes. With you're talking about the Corn one, right? Yeah, the Corn game. I played the Birthright. Birthright. But not Conquest, yeah. Did you play the other one? I should play Conquest. No, not Conquest. I, no, not Conquest. Uh, not, the, not... thir the third one? The third yeah, the one? third one. Did you ever play that one too? Rev Revelations? Revelations, no. yes. No. I want I, I want to, though. Birthright apparently letting... was the easier version of all of them. De definitely, yeah. And it's so, like, I should play Conquest. And maybe I will. But, like, I've actually been... I actually... Uh, I have... The game that Pyra and Mithra is in, I'm pretty the sure. Xenoblade 2? Yeah, I have it, but I've never played it. Oh, bro, you that. need to play it. I've played that game like five times now. It's so really? good. It's so good. Five? It's, it's like, isn't it super, super long? It's a very long game, yes. But I've been, I've been, time. I've been wanting Pyra and Mithra for mm -hmm. ever since Ultimate came out. I wanted. Pyramithra even before Ultimate came out. So like Shulk is in this game too, right? Yeah, uh, Shulk is not in Xenoblade 2. I mean, yes and no, it's DLC. So who's the main character? It's Pyro and Mithra? No, Rex. It's another character entirely. And so but, they chose Pyro and Mithra over the main character? Yes, because Rex Rex is a is funny Rex character. Is Rex the dude in the background who's like... Yeah, he's, the, he's the one in the taunts. He's the one in the victory screens. Okay, I hope he's not annoying. Cause I'm actually he's a I'm child. Actually gonna try try he, this game out. He's a child. Me. He's it's a fun game. Okay. It's a fun game. There's some pretty well, cool like characters. Trust RPGs, me. RPGs, RPGs are my favorite. Like, RPGs are I I like RPGs more than fighting games. Honestly. Yeah, they're so um, good. They're so good. So that's why I like Fire Emblem. And, but it's weird though. Like my favorite franchise of all time is Legend of Zelda. Like that's always gonna be number one. Um, but. Outside of that, um, it's it's Smash. But I got Xenoblade 2, and now that Pyro and Mithra is a thing, um, you're more and, willing and, to play it. <laughs> and, and I'm not, and I don't I don't work at the moment, but I'm still getting unemployment, so I'm just gonna ride this out, and I'm just gonna chill. So this is a great time for me to like play some games that take a long time to beat, <laughs> since I'm not working. Yeah, I think I have like 200 hours on Xenoblade. Like in one playthrough or in uh, your multiple playthroughs? In my playthroughs? multiple playthroughs. Like overall, okay. I think I have 200. It's like 290, I think. Okay. But you like it. Uh, do you like it more than the Fire Emblem games? Uh, Fire Emblem is a good game. I, I, it's hard to say. Uh, the combat this system, the combat, the combat system is very difficult yeah. to get into, actually. Dude, I buy all or these games know. that I've never, I buy all these games that I've never played because I, I want to play Xenoblade Chronicles too, but I also want to play, uh, Astral Chain and Octopath Traveler. I heard Astral Chain is a good game, but that's really it. And Octopath Traveler looks really good too. It's just, I can't play yeah. like that kind of game. Like I've done really? live, I've I've done live action art, or uh, yeah. The battle Dude, I system. I have all these live, games basically. on the Switch that I bought when they first came out that I've never played. I've never played Bayonetta two. I've I never played it. Bayonetta either. <laughs> or Luigi's Mansion. So. It's a pretty I good got, games. I got my work.
cut out for me. Um, but yeah, so I'm definitely gonna try Xenoblade Chronicles. So I want to get. I, I'm. I'm. I care more about getting good with Shulk because, from what I can tell, he's like a, as opposed to Pirate Mithra, because he's like a high reward character. Like, it, it seems like it takes a lot to get good at him, but like I heard that like he's good. He's really good. Yes. But I tried him, and I'm like okay with him because I can't get the things down. That's fine. But, um, so yeah, so for now, I mean, just Ike and, uh, Ike Pit and Lucina. This whole session um, has really just been question after question after question. It's, there's so much, there's so much to, uh, yeah, because I, I'm gonna take, well, because I'm gonna start, yeah, practicing, but there are some things that I just wanted to clarify. Okay. Now that I know, like, the, um, like the on shield, now that I know, what everything means now, like that will be a huge help to me. Cause like, like I can visualize it now in my mind. That's um, good. And I'll, I'll practice um, getting more consistent. So like on YouTube, um, like I can pit like their conf like confirmed combos. You know what I'm saying? They're confirmed um, combos. You mean, you mean just like the, the kill confirms or just the combos themselves? Like, like, cause I remember, down, I remember like, down, down, like pit like down throw into neutral air into is fair? like a fair is like a confirmed true combo maybe i don't know like at a certain percentage like it's guaranteed to work right yes it, it, so it like is I guaranteed want to learn what all the true stuff is you know like what are my guaranteed options like at any given time as opposed it's, to like it's good to know that but you also have to consider DI, as well as what option the opponent's going to pick. That that just adds two more layers to whatever options your character has at that moment. It's not always the combos and the kill confirms. Because you can't guarantee that you're not going to get hit, can you? I can't guarantee it. And you can't guarantee the way they're going to DI, can you? No. <laughs> See, those those two factors alone kind of mess with the whole mindset you're now looking for. There's multiple factors to what you should be looking for in a mindset. Because the mindset, the whole, the whole thing with it, is that you need to think about what the opponent's doing and what you're doing and then try to condition them into doing something so then you can bait it out into a hard punish or some easy combo and make it so they can't realize like i mean some people do realize that there's player there's good enough players that learn and then adapt and then they do it or they try to counterplay what you're doing which is why making like this kind of plan isn't really the best way to start off because there's going to be players that like spam and use all these moves, which is the K rule player and the little Mac player, right? Yeah, exactly. And yeah, you can plan it to fight how you're going to fight your friends. But if you're going mm -hmm. to do like a tournament setting, your friends aren't going to be the people in the tournament, the people in the tournament, Learn. Are going to be better than that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're not going to be spamming. They're not. Well, I mean, yeah, they 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 are going to be spamming, but that's a certain. There, there's levels where it's like, okay, this guy he he likes to attack using a lot of aerials. I'm going to focus on holding shield and then using my out of shield options, mm -hmm. and then try to punish them that way the whole game. But then once they learn that you're punishing punishing them with your out of shield options guess what they're going to do they're going to go for a grab they're going to they're going to they're going to tomahawk they're going to use a grab they're going to be creative mm. about punishing you for punishing them if that makes sense yeah it makes sense and you need to do the same the mindset of i need to work on the combos and the kill confirms and that's it so i can know what options i have that's a good mindset to begin with like, like I did say earlier, I did say earlier that it's not the best way to start off. 
I get it, because you have to learn how to make decisions on the fly, and things are never going to go according to plan. Exactly. So you just have to you give what they... You need to learn how to adapt to... that way. And to take what they give you. Yep. And if you do, let's say, let's say, okay, I'm, I'm with Pit, I'm going to run up and use neutral air. They hold shield. Okay, what's the plan after that? Oh, oh wait, I didn't come up with a plan. Oh. You, you, and then you get punished, and then and then you get punished for using Nair on their shield, and then you'll never understand why because you're like, oh, that Nair should have worked. Well, of course it wouldn't work. They, they held shield, that kind of thing, you know. And mm. yeah, I mean, let's say you like using a lot of Ike Nair. They're gonna they're gonna shield the Nair. They're gonna respect it. They're gonna back off, and then they're gonna punish you for jumping. Because that's the, okay. that's a good way of punishing that nair. That's a good way to punish. Correct. Them. Okay, I wanted to get back to that just real quick, real quick, because I was always under the mindset, and I said this earlier, that if someone shields, you have to grab their shield. Yeah, exactly. But and if it I didn't learned... work, if it didn't work, I mean, what what are you gonna and there do? There were several times, even when I played you, where I missed the grab, but. Um, but it, but it seems like what I learned is there are other options to put pressure on them while they're shielding, not just by grabbing their shield, but like landing with a neutral air, right? Yep. Like a fast falling neutral air or whatever. Using... And then poke, poking their shield, like after you do that, I can poke it with forward tilt. Yeah. Or something like that. Um, you also have to make sure of the spacing. You also have to make sure. Of... Yeah, because if I do that, he can just come out and grab me when I'm done with my neutral air, right? Yeah. So, like, if I, I'll neutral air his shield, but then he's just going to grab me, which is why I don't do that. You also have to worry about the startup of the move. You have to worry. There's there's a lot uh, there's a lot to worry about, but just focus on the beginning parts right now. Okay? Correct. I can do that. You see, when you create a mindset that you feel like can win and then you lose with that mindset like perfectly let's say because you also were like mm -hmm. i need to be perfect with this i need to be perfect with that you you were asking about how to be perfect with by jumping and i mean like i said there's no perfect way to to jump there, there's no perfect way yeah, of using right. anything like that it's just using it and seeing what happens next I gotcha. mean, hell, gotcha. hell, I have my own mindset where I'm like, okay, this is going to guarantee to win, and then it doesn't win, and I'm like, well, why? And then I go back on the replay, and I'm like, oh, well, that's why. And then, boom, I, I, I just try to fix my mindset from there, see how I can improve. Let's think of new ideas of, okay, I'm going to beat out this player by doing this instead, and then that works for a little bit, and then they adapt, and then I lose. You know why? Because they adapted to what I was doing, which means I need to mix up more, which means more counterplay, which means I need to think more of more ways to punish them for what they were doing, which means you see where I'm getting at here? Yeah, definitely. There, there's a lot more to it. It's just mm -hmm. right now you're at that level where you need to be like, okay, I'm going to use this, and then that's it. And then you think about why you got punished, and then you start using other moves that kind of thing i hope Correct. that makes more sense uh this it report does. this report card is gonna be crazy man i don't even know what i'm gonna be putting on it there's so, there's so much okay. to talk about here uh the yeah, video yeah, the video I'm, is like the I'm, main I'm, thing i gotta say that you kind of go to now because there's just so yeah. much <laughs> but I'm, I'm i'm glad that we had this conversation though because now i have like a more vivid picture of okay this i'm just gonna practice um, you know, practice the specific things that we kind of went over. Exactly. Um, and I'm going to like not, I'm, I'm like actually go into practice mode and just practice the same things over and over. Um, I specifically, um, like it's easy for me to practice, but in battle, I don't use his neutral air as much as I should. Yeah. And I never use it like coming out of a grab. And I don't do forward. I don't do up throw with him either. Mm -hmm. So those are the things I'm going to practice on. Practice on up throw to forward air. Um, practicing on like my land, like landing nares as opposed to um, rising nares, which is like my habit, is just everything is a rise, right? Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then switching it up between short hops, because especially with Lucina, like my mindset is like, I'm going to short hop all the time because like, I don't see an advantage that the big hop has unless you're chasing an opponent, right? Like in the air, yeah. But, yeah. But other than that, I feel like the full hop leaves you vulnerable. So I just do, I just do short hops all the time. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm just going to try to be more, be a little bit less predictable with that. Uh, because I, I think Ike, it seems like he has the tools where I can get away with full hopping. Well, let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. How are you going to be less predictable by using the full hop and the short hop? How are you going to do How that? How am I... I mean, my mindset, like I use, I only do short hops, really. Yeah. And if I do full hops, it's, it's not on purpose. So. <laughs> I mean, it's a good way I, to I see. I kind of, I, I kind of see what you're saying, though. Like, what's. How are you going like, to do it? Good... Right? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's what you need to practice. How are you going to mix it up? And then once you start playing the game and start doing it. Then you start realizing mm -hmm. this is how I'm gonna I'll... mix it up, or you make it your own habit, and then you, you break mm -hmm. that own you break that habit. The whole process of this whole game here is making habits and then breaking the habits for better habits, or something like that. <clears throat> correct, correct. Like I still have some uh, shielding and spot dodging habits and rolling habits. Well, I didn't really, I didn't really notice anything little, bad. More <laughs> That's good. Like, I have a, uh, a buddy of mine that, like, he, my cousin is not as good as me, and so, like, I give him tricks and tips, and I'm like, dude, you need to spot dodge now. <laughs> and he, he started doing it, and he, like, loves it, right? Because if you do it right, you get, like, a free move. You get your free opponent. punish, yeah. <clears throat> but now, he's doing it all the time. And it actually is catching me slipping, because he just he just does it all the time now. And now um, you gotta punish him for doing that. Also, rip the arena. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I don't arena shut down. want to keep you too much longer. But yeah, um, so now I, I I need to show him what happens. <laughs> You're gonna punish him for that. spot dodging, right? Yeah, and I guess the best way to punish is uh, to like hold the smash attack no it's more like just delaying the move let's say you wanted to punish him for spot dodging right you jump he spot dodges you you now attack because yeah, I got you. if you attack while you spot that while you notice he spot dodge you you'll uh you'll pretty much get the punish because well, if, once if the I attack, attack comes while out I'm spot dodging it's not gonna no here's the thing here's the thing me. here's the thing if you react to someone spot dodging, you're going to be like, oh, he spot dodged, I'm going to throw out an attack. And then that was also delayed. So you're going to punish him for spot dodging because you just reacted to to it. Correct. Okay. I see, I see, I see, I see. If you're, especially if you're using a laggy move, like let's say Ike forward smash. I mean, if you paid attention, if you were paying attention to how he was spot dodging and just kind of predicted it, you're punishing him for the end lag of the spot dodge. The rolls, the spot dodges, all the, both the rolls and the spot dodges have the end lag too. They have end lag, meaning they like also after have you spot end lag. dodge. There's a certain amount of time before you can use a move. Yes, that's what end lag is, correct? Yep. Okay, that makes sense. Both rolls okay. and spot dodges have the same kind of thing going for them. Yeah. I mean, it seems like everything has everything in the whole game is like risk versus reward. Yeah. So if you, you go have for a high risk and go for a low reward, it's not going to go very well. Correct. So the best players have they use low risk moves for high reward. That yes. Do have a chance of working. Correct. Correct. Okay, I see that. Pretty good. So, yeah, thanks. I mean, I think I got a lot to chew on. <laughs> Especially um, after today. And I'll, I'll practice. I'm not even kidding, though. Like, I'm going to practice for a little bit, but 
I, I, I've kind of already been on this mindset, but I'm probably going to start Xenoblade Chronicles tonight. <laughs> That's understandable. <laughs> or something. It's a good game, man. You got to tell me what, what you think about it when, when in our next session. Yeah, I mean, it's an RPG, right? So, yeah, it is. It's, it's okay. a, a live-action RPG, basically. Okay, because I grew up with, like, Pokemon and Fire Emblem, so... I'm sure this is a little different, but... Um, yeah, the combat... More like the Mario and Luigi RPG games. Like, I forget what they're called, but... I, I know I liked them. I played them. Okay. Yeah, me too. But, yeah. So... But that's the thing, like literally all my friends, because I think Pyro and Mithra is also the easy to play, which I think is the appeal for like us casual gamers, right? Yeah. Um, and so like literally all my friends play Pyro and Mithra, which was a shame because like I wanted to play her, but like- I mean, I'm, like, player, all you gotta do is player. That's, that's, you don't that's have to, chose, you don't have to think about joining the crowd. That's why I chose to play Pit is because like I have like 10 friends that play Smash. And none of them, what, one of them plays Dark Pit, but he doesn't even play him that much. So it's like, I'm going to show you guys that you're sleeping on Pit. So, like, I want to pick characters that, like, none of my friends use uh-huh. to show them that, like, I can still be better than them with bad characters, even though Pit isn't a bad character, but everyone thinks he is. They think he's boring. Like, that's the general consensus. All my friends think he's the most boring character in the game. A lot of people think Pit's boring. Yeah, because he doesn't ha- he doesn't have anything. He has like a really shitty side B. He has all really bad smash attacks. I think the only good thing about him is the fact that he's a multi hit character, and people don't even like the multi hits because they're inconsistent. Multi hit as in his smash attack or his neutral air? Uh, multi hit like you know the hit boxes that just appear and then disappear and then reappear and then disappear like those kind of hit boxes. Okay. If. Yeah, I got it. See, that's like his neutral air. Yes, it's like the neutral air. But you, you can also talk about up smash, forward smash, forward air, up air. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Those moves. I like his. I, I like his up air. His up air is pretty cool. Okay. So that works. So yeah, I'm gonna practice those things, and I'm sure before I see you again, I'll play some games with my friends. So I'll have a good idea of how I'm able to, you know, how it's actually applying and then see what I continue to work on. But um, I think I have a good understanding of, you know, what I'm going to practice with I Can Pit, so. All right. I'm glad, um, I'm glad, you're, able to, I'm glad you're able to <laughs> understand what you uh, want to yeah, do for practice. Also, yeah, for sure. But also, you know, I'll listen to the report card and, see what you know i mean uh, you... i would say this whole video kind of explains it yeah no you're right so don't put don't because i can't i i can't remember don't put everything. too much time don't, don't put too much time into the report card i can't remember don't everything stress you out about it yeah it's fine because i know i, I know, know at this I point i know at this point i'd forget at least something yeah no i got you it's just i i'm at this point i just want to spend time on uh getting my aerials uh consistent um you told me not to spend too much time on his you know kill confirms or combo confirms or whatever i mean Um, do do spend the time on it do spend the time on it just don't mm -hmm. that's not the be all end all like don't yeah because the the opponent the opponent's only gonna be at like 40 percent one time during the whole stock right like, <laughs> why worry about it? Like, yeah, you want to get it perfectly during the set, but you're right. There's only Plus, like I, once, three chances once to they get them hit at forty to past, do that. Once, once they hit seventy, it's not like there's any combos that are gonna be true at that point. Like down least. tilt up air is probably your best option, but that's like your kill option. So you wouldn't want to rely on that. You'd want to rely on like down throw nair. I, I know I rely on like down throw back air at high percent because people tend to bi uh, out. Like, they're like, they're afraid of the neutral air, so I'm like, okay, down throw back air. And uh, they could possibly die, especially like around the ledge. That kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, that is something I'm going to work on too. Is uh, the being able to use my back, my back air. Yes. Uh, I want, because Ike has a very powerful back air. 
Um, uh, I would say practice the late landing hit of the Nair into the back air. That's a better one. Okay, yeah. But, like, with Pit, for some reason, I feel like Pit's back air is way easier for me to land than Ike's. Yeah, because Ike's, Ike, like I said, Ike's is Especially if you short hop. I don't even know how to land it. You know, it's almost like you have to full hop in order you to have, get that yeah. out. Yeah, basically. Um, but yeah, I want to work on like how to do that where I can like make it seem effortless where I like turn around, back air, like, you know what I mean? Like run forward turn around and back then do air. the back wear thing. Yeah. Because that takes a lot of, I think... It seems like that's going to take practice. That's so. a RAR for you, man. I, I'll, well, what, I'll yeah, send what you does a, that stand for again? A reverse aerial what? rush. A reverse aerial rush. Okay. I will practice that too. Because I think all the characters I like have really good... The only one I would say that doesn't have a good one is Ike. Because of the Okay, but I know Pitts is good. And Pitts I'm is good, yes. probably. Lucina's is probably the best. Lucina is the best one when it comes to all of your characters. Okay. Cool, cool. So I'll focus on those three. But once I get good at the game, like, I want to expand my library. Like, I want to be able to beat my friends with, like, anybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I remember you <laughs> but, talking about that. And then, and then like, we stopped I'm, getting I'm session. still serious about that. I, I'm still serious about that. Like, I just want to go on a random and destroy my friend. Kind of like, because I think you could do that with me. or like. Yeah, I friends. could like play random and just kick, <laughs> kick your ass. Yeah, I think you could <laughs> with most of the characters. And so like, that's pretty much my goal is to be able to do that. But first we'll stick with the characters that I'm familiar with, which is those, th those three. And then at four, my fourth best character is Ness. Because if you want a cheese, Ness is a great cheese character. Yeah, and all my friends do all man. this most of them, all my friends do all this stuff and i'm like all right let me just pick up the ness side so b the hell i'll pk fire the hell out of you and his back throw is like kind of broken his back throw is very good yes so um all right we should probably leave it yeah. Out there yeah definitely all right but thank you though i appreciate it no problem man um, you're able to leave a review by clicking end session and uh i'll text you when both the report card and the video are up you're fine cool, with the cool. you're fine with the no video rush. going up public, right? Yeah. All right, cool. Because I, I will go back and watch certain things. Plus, it makes it easier um, to just find it instead of going correct. through the yeah. DM. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. That sounds good. But thanks, man. I know I kind of took you uh, a little long on this one, but thanks. No for problem, just man. No problem. Listen it out. And, uh, yes, sir. But uh, we'll talk again soon. Yep. And I'll practice. So I appreciate it. See you later, man. Yes, sir. Have a good one.